Okay, we're going to take you through a 3D analysis here, and this is really what taught me the importance of sequencing what I'm teaching, um, meaning the importance of starting the swing from the ground up and how each body segment factors into the next. When you read the graph on the other side, on the right side, you'll see the red line signifies the lower body, the legs, the green, the core, the blue, the shoulders and arms, and the brown spike is the barrel head. So... What you're looking at right here in the 3D graph is each part or segment feeds the next part to produce a higher spike, which feeds the ultimate goal of the swing is to create as much bat speed as we can. In order to do so, we have to be efficient from each previous segment to pass the energy on to the next segment. So when we, we see the swing right now, we're going to begin with the lower body. And this is where I've become so detailed in my teaching of the lower body. And it's so important because any inefficiency we have in the lower body is going to directly affect what we do with the rest of the swing. So the lower body begins to fire first. You're seeing the red segment spiking right now. Notice how early hip rotation peaks out in speed. It's about a third of the way into the turn. That's why it's so important that the hitter gets grounded and we get a good front heel plant in order for that energy to be passed from the legs into the upper body. So at this point, the legs or the hip rotation is going to slow down and trail off as our core begins to spike. So very early on, that rotational energy is being passed to the next segment. So the core is beginning to increase in speed and the hip rotation slows and eventually will stop altogether. The core is a conductor of energy, meaning if my upper body has good resistance against the legs driving, then your core is going to be a tight conductor of energy. The energy will pass through quicker into the upper body. There's a few things that will affect how much energy gets passed onto the shoulders. So this core spike is dependent on, of course, the sequencing, the legs firing first against the resisting upper body, two, the strength of the core, and three, the flexibility or stretch. So if we have a deficiency in any of those areas, we're not going to get as much of the leg energy, the biggest muscles in the body, to travel on to the shoulder. So all of those areas need to be addressed for the best bat speed in the hitter. So now you're looking at the core starting to trail off its rotational maximum speed and the shoulders begin to accelerate. So I kind of compare this to a relay race. The first guy in the relay race sprints and he begins to pass on the baton with the second guy already running. They pass it on and the first guy trails off and eventually stops while the second guy accelerates and so on. So that's what's happening right here. The core is accelerating, it's slowing down, it's already passed the energy onto the shoulders which through a summation of forces, you see the red line and the green line, we're adding those together to build a higher blue spike. So that's the shoulders and the arms. So at any point, if the legs aren't efficient, usually the upper body is gonna take over instead. It's gonna fire sooner. So we don't get that addition of forces. We don't get the lower body feeding into the upper body. We get the upper body taking over too early in the swing, which will affect the ultimate spike of what we're looking for is the, the best bat speed we can create. So if you have a deficiency anywhere earlier in the sequence and the upper body takes over because of that earlier deficiency, then we're not going to have as high of a spike in our bat speed. So that's why, again, it's important that we get each piece taught correctly before you're ready to move on as an instructor to the next piece. Just teaching the upper body uh, exclusively and leaving out how much the lower body factors into the upper body's rotational speed and ultimate bat speed is doing your hitter a, a giant disservice. So the shoulders are rotating now at maximum speed and they're ready to pass their baton onto the uh, the hands and the barrel head. So that's what's happening now. So we're going to see that barrel head begin to spike as he gets to the strongest position of contact with the rear elbow connected just in front of the body line. And contact will slow then the bat down. Uh, once, of course, it makes contact, the barrel is going to slow because of the, 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 the contacted speed of the ball. And then we get a, a, a soon a momentary spike once again as the player rolls his hands over. So that's why you see that brown one spike trail off dramatically. Spike briefly again as the wrists roll, and then it'll trail off altogether during the follow-through. So the point of this, what it taught me, you know, other than just doing 2D analysis for years and years and being a subjective opinion of what I think the swing should be, this 3D analysis gives us an objective data on exactly how the swing should be taught. 
This is not Justin Stone making this up. I'm not smart enough to do that. What this is is scientific data saying if you aren't teaching the swing in this sequence, your hitter isn't going to achieve his best bat speed. So we have to teach the lower body first. Once the lower body is as efficient as possible, we address the core. Does he have enough flexibility? Is that something he needs to address on his own strength and conditioning wise? So when you get guys that are just saying, well, I'm going to focus on the hands, I see that a lot with guys with a high plane former background that are starting to teach. You get this even with big league guys. My time spent around a big league cage, that's something that I notice. They're talking about their hands the most. But most of those guys to get to the big league level, whether they realize it or not, are in sequence. So the hands is a very important and the last piece of the puzzle for them. And it does make a difference when you're seeing velocity on a regular occasion that high. But the animals that we're dealing with on an everyday basis, the amateur player that's coming in and trying to get instruction from us, they're almost all, 99% of the time, going to have some deficiencies earlier in the swing below the shoulders. I mean, they're going to be inefficient somewhere in the legs, they're going to be inefficient somewhere in the core, or simply they're starting their swing out of sequence. So it's our jobs as coaches and instructors to make them as efficient as possible. And that goes back to addressing the earliest error. The earlier that the player makes an error, the more it's going to affect the, the ultimate spike of the bat speed. And usually what that means is the upper body is recruited earlier, uh, which means the hitter is going to be out of sequence and the bat speed isn't going to be as great. So that's, that's one thing I really want to emphasize from showing this graph, that once your lower body efficiency is achieved, now you're ready to move on to those next segments. So it's not that I don't teach hands, that I don't teach hands until all these other segments are completely correct because I'm putting the cart before the horse, and although I might get a guy to stay inside the ball, I might be able to get a guy even with a good path. I'm never going to get him to achieve his best bat speed if I'm not making sure he's driving with the lower body efficiently and correctly first in sequence.